The topic that we are going to be discussing now is kinetic and potential energy. Previously, we've talked about energy transfer and how the energy is basically dissipated and how there is a formula of power and how power and energy are created. And the main thing, another main thing that we studied was the concept of the conservation of energy that the energy can never be created or destroyed, but it is always converted from one form to the other. So, um, if we think about it, so kinetic and potential energy is are the forms of energy we talk about a lot when we will be discussing them a lot because they are very uh, widely seen in our daily life. So, these are the two major types of energy forms. Let's first initially discuss the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is the energy that um, the body has because of its motion. For a body of mass m that is traveling with velocity v. So as the word itself says kinetic energy, it is very clear that kinetic energy is possessed by any object or any thing that is moving or is in motion so for a body of mass m like for a body which has mass m uh, it will travel with velocity v and so that basically if we go about it then we'll get the formula of kinetic energy that is 1 by 2 mv squared now this tells us the formula for kinetic energy is directly proportional the energy is directly proportional to the squared of velocity so that means that the more the velocity is the more kinetic energy an object possesses uh, double the velocity four times the kinetic energy for example a football of mass 0.4 kilograms moving with velocity 20 meters per second has kinetic energy that is 1 by 2, I'm going to change that. 1 by 2 into 0.4 multiplied by 20 raised to power 2. That gives us 80 Newton meter. So that basically is how much kinetic energy it will uh, possess. It's basically just putting in the values in this formula. Since the kinetic energy depends on V squared, a high speed vehicle traveling at 1000 km per hour has 100 times the kinetic energy it has at 100 kilometers per hour. So the thing is that although even though the even though the velocity is it's just 10 folds, however, the change in kinetic energy is going to be 100 folds. It's going to be 100 times greater because it's 10 squared. Uh, the relation with velocity is that of squared. So that really tells us that the magnitude of velocity is really important when we're talking about the energy that uh, an object can possess, the kinetic energy. Potential energy is the energy a body has because of its position or condition. A body above Earth's surface is considered to have an amount of gravitational uh, potential energy equal to the work that has been done against the gravity by a force used to raise it. To lift a body of mass m through a vertical height h at a place where Earth's gravitational field strength is d needs a force equal and opposite to the weight mg of the body. Hence, work done by force is equal to force multiplied by the vertical height. As we have discussed this formula before, that work is equal to force multiplied by the distance that uh, the object has traveled in the direction of force because of that force. So we are basically going to equate the work done against gravity to the gravitation potential energy an object can possess. So uh, that's basically what is being done here. Mg multiplied by h that gives us mgh. Okay. When m is in kilograms, g is in newtons per kilogram. 
and h is in meters the potential energies in joules so basically tells that when we have objects in their si units which is that mass is in kilogram and that uh, gravitational potential in sorry gravitational acceleration is newtons per kilograms and height is in meters then the the si unit for energy that we're going to use is going to be j joules so um so however let's just say if we use um if if we don't use kilograms and we use um and we use some other you know prefix or some other uh, quantity or let's just say instead of meters i'm going to use um kilometers then the that the potential energy is also going to be in uh, kilojoules so that's basically how the you know the prefixes as they usually work they're going to um that they're going to work but the SI unit for the potential energy or for kinetic energy is basically joules so for example if g is 10 the potential energy given by 100 gram mass which is 0.1 kg raised by a vertical height of 1 meter is going to be 1 joule now you can see that the gravitational potential energy they have taken as 10 newtons per kilogram obviously Strictly speaking, we are concerned with changes in potential energy from uh, that which a body has at the Earth's surface rather than the actual values. The expression for potential energy is therefore more accurately written as delta EP is equal to where P is in subscript, it's not another quantity, is equal to MGH where delta is pronounced as delta, that means change in. So that basically means that... Um, it isn't like an absolute value that an object has it's it's about the changes in potential energy right because if an object is on the surface or if it's on the ground it still has some potential energy but we are also talking about them uh the changes because we are always being pulled by the um you know the force that the earth exerts on us so there's that Okay, now we are going to talk about the conservation of energy and we've already discussed how different types of energy from trans uh, energy forms are transformed and how they're different and how they are converted from one form to the end to the other. So what happens is that uh, kinetic to potential or potential to kinetic energy transformation is a very uh, it's a very major or is a very common transformation of energy that we see in our daily lives yet we don't really you know think about it that way in terms of energy but if we do then everything is in you know energy perspective so basically if we apply the conservation of energy on literally a ball of let's just say of mass m uh, some random mass and it is thrown towards the ground from, from from some height so a mass m at height h above the ground has potential energy mgh well uh, the ball or the object whatever that was it was initially stationary so so basically that means so that basically means that the kinetic energy is zero because the ball isn't moving um it is it is not moving however it is at some height so that basically means that it possesses potential energy so now that we have like a you know like a source or like a good amount of potential energy everything that is being uh, that ev now that you know we'll be discussing different types of energies so all these energies are going to be derived from this major form like the starting point is this potential energy store that this ball has because it is held at a height okay so the ball is um uh, thrown towards the ground and then that as it moves towards the ground its potential energy decreases as there is a decrease in height and it's uh, it gets kinetic energy eventually it turns into kinetic energy 
uh, initially it has all kinetic energy uh, sorry it has both potential energy and kinetic energy with increasing kinetic energy because of the acceleration towards the ground which means that the velocity is increasing and we know that if velocity increases potential uh, sorry, kinetic energy is obviously increasing and decreasing potential energy because uh, the height is decreasing the relative height uh, is decreasing so ke is equal to mgh pe is equal to zero that says that when the ball touches the ground uh, it has its maximum velocity right so it has its maximum velocity which that means that the kinetic energy that it could have got it has reached its maximum value however since it's at the ground so the relative potential energy energy that the ball you know had or possessed it's now equal to zero and all of that potential energy that it had in the start is now converted into uh, kinetic energy and let's just say this ball bounces back up so the cycle will repeat and after hitting the ground there will be some heat losses because of friction and everything so so the ball will not rise up to the same level or to the same height as it did before um because now it does not it cannot have that much potential energy the kinetic energy that it will move with uh when moving upwards after the bounce it won't be as much as the initial potential energy because some of it is now converted into heat energy. So, okay, the equation delta P is equal to mgh applies for any path that has changed in height, not just when mass is lifted straight up. Okay, so now th this is a very important thing to note that even when you are like using stairs or literally any roller request or anything it's about the change in height it's not about the path taken or it's not about some other thing or some other conversions uh it's it's about the vertical it's about the height that we're talking so it is much easier to calculate mgh a simple multiplication that it is to calculate to get the work done along a complicated path that is very true so i mean instead of making very tedious calculations or doing them um from like we talk about every step let's just say we're talking about a person who is on a roller coaster and we are going to take the force into distance of that the engine of the roller coaster and the force exerted multiplied by the magnitude of the path and everything so instead of that what is more easier is that when the if you imagine a roller coaster when it is at its highest point it is stationary for some time so that means that it has no kinetic energy and if we just find the height of that point and just just multiply with mgh then that's going to give us the potential energy and that's like a very easier way to actually calculate the work done along that complicated path just by using the concept of heights so from now on we'll consider that any change in vertical position h of a mass m is accompanied by a change in gravitational potential and energy mgh and we will avoid the equivalent but more difficult task of calculating work done against the gravitational uh, force okay so pe is equal to mgh for any path between two points that is the basically take away the work done by the ground upon the okay yeah so now we are going to talk about some uh daily life applications and one of them is that of this kangaroo so work done by the ground upon the kangaroo reduces its kinetic energy to zero as it lands uh, however by applying the force on the ground on the hind legs over a longer distance the impact of the bones is reduced so that basically tells how uh, why a kangaroo jumps like that because the impact is reduced and instead of getting all the strain at 
you know this specific joint it is like more spread out over these huge feet or whatever this shape is of its bones and you can also see that they're also tilted they're not like straight human legs that's also because it reduces the impact so these are some things that you know reduce the energy impact we can have when we get abrupt changes and everything okay so now this is a very 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 important topic and it's something that comes in exams a lot uh, so it's really very important to have the concept of pendulum and oscillatory motions clear in your head so in the case of pendulum kinetic energy and potential energy are interchanged continually the kinetic energy of the bob the bo energy of the bob is all potential energy at the end of the swing which means this point or this point because these are the ends of the swing and all kinetic energy as it passes through its center well at this point it's just kinetic energy in other positions it had it has both potential and kinetic energy over here over here or literally any place between these places right so that is basically it consists combinations of both potential and kinetic energy eventually all the energy is changed to heat as a result of overcoming air resistance well so if what happens is that let's just say you give it a little push or whatever so the pendulum is at this point in the start which is the datum line which is the neutral point right uh, so it is hanging in here and let's just say it's stationary well okay yeah so if if you if you give it a push then you have done some work on it and that work has been transformed into the kinetic energy that this bob or this ball possesses now so if if you move it or if you give it a push it's definitely going to move in this direction and now you can see that there's some difference in height we don't care about the path taken we don't care about the the length of the path or anything all we care about when we're talking about potential energy changes is the height let's just say we're taking the end mark or let's just say we can we're, we're talking about the center mark so yeah this mark and this mark so i'll just take the distance from here till that mark and that will give me the distance in height and mgh with that height and it's going to give you the potential energy the speed can be calculated very easily okay so this is how it works that basically maximum potential energy bob is here then it gains some potential energy and then over this point it reaches the maximum value of potential energy and then it goes back the opposite cycle happens and so on and so forth it happens like that okay now like we are seeing that in these specifically potential and uh, kinetic energy conversions there are a lot of collisions that are happening collision with the ground collision with two balls or two trucks or whatever trolleys so it's very important to understand the concept of elastic and inelastic collisions and how they're different so in all collisions there is normally a loss of kinetic energy usually to heat energy and to a small extent to sound energy the greater the proportion of kinetic energy loss the elastic is the collision so that basically means that the more inelast inelastic uh sorry the less elastic is the collision the more inelastic it is so what happens is that the if if the whole kinetic energy if there are two trucks that are being uh you know towed or that they just got hit with each other and if there there is like a greater proportion of kinetic energy which means that if both of these trucks have significant velocities even after the collision then that means that it was like an elastic collisions there were less heat uh, losses it is very important to know that conservation of momentum will still be held in every scenario in elastic collisions in elastic collisions okay so uh, the greater the proportion of kinetic energy the lesser uh, kinetic energy loss the lesser elastic the collision is so the, basically the more inelastic it is and also that a perfectly inelastic perfectly elastic collision kinetic energy is conserved that the momentum is conserved in both of them in elastic and in inelastic collisions however the perfect elastic collision is the one in which kinetic energy 
is also conserved from the start of the experiment or the, from the start of the scenario to the end of the scenario. Momentum is conserved in an elastic collision too, but one cannot drive kinetic energy through the collision since some of it is converted to other forms of energy. So this is like about it for um, this topic that is the kinetic energy and the potential energy.